Hello everyone, it's Miss Nan, your Learning Center Specialist, and we are continuing Esperanza Rising on Chapter 8. Here we go. Las Almandras, the almonds. Almonds. Ay, my neck hurts, said Mama as she massaged the back of her head with her hand. It's not my neck, it's my arms that are sore, said Hortensia. It is the same for everyone, said Josefina. When you first start in the sheds, the body refuses to bend, but in time, you will get used to the work. Everyone had come home that night, tired and with various aches and pains. They gathered in one cabin for dinner, so it was crowded and noisy. Josefina warmed a pot of beans and Hortensia made fresh tortillas. Juan and Alfonso talked about the fields when Miguel and Isabel played with the babies, making them squeal with laughter. Mama cooked rice and Esperanza surprised was surprised that Mama just knew just how to brown it first with the oil, onions, and peppers. Esperanza chopped toma uh, tomatoes, tomates for a salad and hoped no one would mention the sweeping. She was glad this day was over. Her bruises had been to her pride. Isabel took a fresh tortilla, sprinkled it with salt, rolled it up like a cigar, and waved it at Miguel. How come you and Tio Alfonso won't let me go behind the cabin with you? Shh, he said. It's a surprise. Why are you full of secrets? Why are you so full of secrets? asked Esperanza. But neither Alfonso nor Miguel answered. They simply smiled while they prepared their plates. They ate dinner. They ate dinner, but before they could slice a cantaloupe for dessert, Alfonso and Miguel disappeared with instructions not to follow them. What are they saying? What are they doing? demanded Isabel. Hortensia shrugged as if she knew nothing. Miguel came back just before sunset. Signora and Esperanza, we have something to show you. Esperanza looked at Mama. It was obvious Mama was as confused as she was. They all followed Miguel to where Alfonso was waiting. Behind the cabin was an old oval wash tub with one end cut off. It had been set on its side, forming a little shrine around a plastic statue of Our Lady Guadalupe. Someone had built a grotto of rocks around the base of the tub. Around it, a large plot of earth had been fenced in by sticks and rope and planted with thorny stems, each with only a few branches. Isabel grasped. It's beautiful. Is that our statue? Josefina nodded. But the roses come from far away. Esperanza searched Miguel's face. Her eyes were hopeful. Papa's? Yes, these are your papa's roses, said Miguel, smiling at her. Alfonso had dug circles of earth around the plant. Casitas, little houses that made moats for deep watering, just like he had done in Aguas Calientes. But how? Esperanza remembered the rose garden as a blackened graveyard. After the fire, my father and I dug down to the roots. Many were still healthy. We carried the cuttings from Aguas Calientes, and that's why we had to keep them wet. We think they will grow, and in time, we will see how many they'll bloom. Esperanza bent closer to look at the stems rooted in mulch. They were leafless and stubby, but lovely planted. She remembered the night before the fire when she had last seen the roses and had wanted to ask Hortensia to make rosehip tea, but she had never had the chance. Now, if they bloomed, she could drink tea, she could drink the memories of the roses that had known Papa. She looked at Miguel, blinking back tears. Which one is yours? Miguel pointed to one. Which one is mine? He smiled and pointed to the one that was closest to the cabin wall and already had a makeshift trellis propped up against it. So you can climb, he said. Mama walked up and down, carefully touching each cutting. She took Alfonso's hands in her own and kissed him on the cheek on each cheek. Then she went to Miguel and did the same. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias, she said. Mama looked at Esperanza. Didn't I tell you that Papa's heart would follow us and find us wherever we go? The next morning, Hortensia put a piece of fabric over the window and sent Alfonso next door with Miguel Juan and the babies. Hortensia, Mama, and Josefina brought in the big wash tubs and filled them half full with cold water. They heated up the pots of water on the stove and warmed the baths. Esperanza was excited at the idea of getting into the tub. All they had done since they arrived had washed their faces and arms with cold water in the sink. She hadn't had a real bath since she had left Aguas Calientes. But it was Saturday and tonight was the Ama 
Ika, Amika. So the entire camp was getting cleaned up. Baths were taken, shirts ironed, hairs washed and crimped. Hortensia had given Esperanza her bath since she was a baby and they had established a routine. Esperanza stood near the tub with her arms outstretched while, or, while Hortensia undressed her. Then she got into the tub and tried not to giggle while Hortensia washed her. She tilted her head back, keeping her eyes closed while she rinsed her hair. Finally, she stood up and nodded, which was Hortensia's signal to wrap the towel around her. Esperanza went to one of the wash tubs, put her hands out to her sides, and waited. Josefina looked at Hortensia and raised her eyebrows. Isabel said, Esperanza, what are you doing? Mama walked over to Esperanza and said softly, I think that you are old enough to bathe yourself, don't you think? Esperanza quickly dropped her arms and remembers Marta's taunting voice saying, no one will be waiting on you here. Yes, mama, she said, and for the second time in two days, she felt her face burning as everyone stared at her. Hortensia came over, put her arm around Esperanza and said, we are accustomed to doing certain things a certain way, aren't we, Esperanza? But I guess I am not too old to change. We will help each other. I will unbutton the buttons you cannot reach and you will help Isabella, yes? Josefina, we will need more hot water in these tubs. Andale, hurry. As Hortensia helped her with her blouse, Esperanza whispered, thank you. Isabella and Esperanza went first, bathing in the tubs, then bending their heads over to wash their hair. Mama and Josefina poured cups of water over them to rinse off the soap. The women took turns going back and forth to the stove for hot water. Esperanza liked being with all of them in the tiny room, talking and laughing and rinsing each other's hair. Josefina and Hortensia talked about all the gossip in the camp. And Mama sat in her slip and combed out Isabella's tangles. The women took their turns, and when Hortensia needed hot water, Esperanza rushed to get it for, for her before anyone else could. Cleaned and dressed, still wet hair, Esperanza and Isabel went out went outside to the wooden table under the trees. Josefina had given them a burlap bag of almonds she wanted shelled. Isabella bent over and brushed her hair in the dry air. Are you coming to the dance tonight? The gathering tonight? She asked. Esperanza didn't answer at first. She hadn't not left the cabin since she made a fool of herself yesterday. I don't know, maybe. My mama said it is the best. My mama said, it is best to get over with it and face people. And if they tease you, you just laugh. I know, said, is, I know, I know, said Esperanza fluffing her own hair that was almost dry. She dumped the nuts on the table and picked up an almond still in its flattened pond. She snapped the edge of the shell and pried it apart, then pulled the meat from its defenses and ate it. I suppose Marta will be there tonight. Probably, said Isabel, and all of her friends, too. How does she know English? She was born here, and her mother, too. They, they are citizens, said Isabel, helping shell the almonds. Her father came from Sonora during the revolution. They've never been to Mexico. There are a lot of kids who live in the camp who've never been to Mexico. My father doesn't like it when Marta comes to our... Uh, amigas though, because she's always talking to people about striking. There was almost a strike during almonds, but not enough people had agreed to stop working. My mama says if, if there was to be a strike, we would have to go out to the orchard and shake the trees ourselves for these almonds. Then we're lucky. What is your mama making with the nuts? Flan, flan de amen, flan de amandra, said Isabel. She will sell them tonight. Esperanza's mouth watered. That was her fav favorite sweets. Then I have made my decision. I will come. The platform was lit up with big lights. Men from the camp in starch press shirts and cowboy hats sat in chairs during tuning their guitars and violins. Long rows of tables were covered in bright tablecloths where the women sold tamales, desserts, and the specialty agua de icama hibiscus flower water punch made with the red Mexican amica bloom. Amica, amica. 
Amika Bloom. Uh, there was bingo on the wooden tables for a long line of chairs circling the dance area for those who wanted to watch. That's where Mama and Hortensia sat, talking to other women. Esperanza stayed close to them, watching the growing crowd. Where do all these people come from? She asked. The fiestas are popular. People come from other camps, said Josefina, and from Bakersfield, too. When the music started, everyone crowded around the platform, clapping and singing. People started to dance and started dancing in the area around the stage. Children ran everywhere, chasing and hiding. Men held young boys on their shoulders and women swaddled their infants, all of them swaying to the sounds of the small band. After a while, Esperanza left Mama and the others and wandered through the noisy crowd, thinking how strange it would be. It could be that in so many people, she still felt all alone. She saw a group of girls and huddled in the middle. She saw a group of girls who seemed about her age, but they were huddled together. More than anything, she wished Merosal were here. Isabel found her and pulled her hand. Esperanza, come and see. Esperanza let herself be led through the crowd. It was clear that Isabel desperately wanted to see what was going on. From someone, someone from town had brought a litter of kittens. Esperanza whispered to her, I will go ask your mother. She wove back through the crowd to find Josefina, and, and when she agreed, Esperanza practically ran back to the stop, stop to tell Isabel. But when she got there, a bigger crowd gathered and something else was going on. Marta and some of her friends stood in the bed of a pickup truck that was parked nearby, each of them holding one of the tiny kittens. This is what we are here. This is what we are, she yelled. Small, meek animals. And that is how they treat us because we don't speak up. If we don't ask for what is rightfully ours, we will never get it. Is this how we want to live? She held the kitten by the back of the neck, waving it high in the air. It hung limp in front of the crowd. With no decent home and no mercy of those bigger than us, richer than us? Isabel trembled, her eyes in panic. Will she drop it? A man called out. Maybe all that cat wants to do is feed its family. Maybe it doesn't care what all the other cats are doing. Senor, does it not bother you that some of you, of your compadres live better than others? Yelled one of Martha's friends. We are going to strike in two weeks at the peak of cotton for higher wages and better housing. We don't pick cotton on this farm, yelled another man from their camp. What does it matter, yelled Marta. If we all stop working, if all the Mexicans are juntos together, she made a fist and held her hand in the air, then maybe it will help us all, he yelled back. Is this, that is a chance we cannot take. We just want to work. That's why we came here, get out our camp. A cheer rose up around him. People started shoving and Esperanza grabbed, grabbed it, Isabel's hand and pulled her aside. A young man jumped on the truck and started the engine. Marta and the others tossed the kittens into the field. Then they pulled up some of their supporters in the back of the truck with them and raised their arms, chanting, strike, strike. Why is she so angry? asked Esperanza as she walked back to the cabin with a, a few hours later with Josefina, Isabel, and the babies leaving the others to stay later. Isabel carried the soft meowing angel, soft meowing orange kitten in her arms. She and her mother move around to find work, sometimes all over the state, she said. They work wherever there is something to be harvested. Those camps, the migrant camps, are the worst. Like when we were in El Centro, said Isabel. Worse, said Josefina. Our camp is a company camp and people who work here don't leave. Some live here for many years, and that's why we came to this country, to work, to take care of our families, to become citizens. We are lucky because our camp is better than most. There are many of us who don't want to get involved in the strike because we can't afford our, to lose our jobs, and we are accustomed to how things are in our little community. They want to strike for better houses, asked Esperanza. That and more money for those who pick cotton, said Josefina. Only they, they only get seven cents a pound for, for picking cotton. They want 10 cents a pound. It seems like such a small price to pay, but in the past, the growers said no. And now more people are coming to the valley to look for work, especially from places like Oklahoma, where there is little or no work, little rain and little hope. If the Mexicans strike, the big farms will simply hire others. Then what would we do? 
Esperanza wondered what would happen if Mama didn't have a job. Would they have to go back to Mexico? Josefina put the babies back to bed. Back to bed. Then she kissed Isabel and Esperanza on their foreheads and sent them next door. Isabel and Esperanza laid in their beds listening to the music and the bursts of laughter in the background. The kitten, after drinking a bowl of milk, curled up, curled up in Isabel's arms. Esperanza tried to imagine conditions that were more shabby than this room that was covered in newspaper to keep out the wind. Could things possibly get worse? Sleepily, Isabel said, did you have parties in Mexico? Yes, whispered Esperanza, keeping her promise to tell Isabel about her old life. Big parties, and once Mama hosted a party for 100 people. The tables were set with lace and tablecloths, crystal and china, and silver candelabras. The servants cooked for a week. Esperanza continued, reliving the extravagant moments, but was, but was relieved when she knew Isabel was asleep. For some reason, after hearing about Martha and her family, she felt guilty talking about the richness of her life in Aguas Calientes. Esperanza was still awake when Mama came to bed later. A stream of light from the other room allowed just enough brightness for her to watch Mama unbraid her hair and brush it out. Did you like the party? Mama whispered. I miss my friends, said Esperanza. I know it is hard. Do you know what I miss? Do you want to know what I miss? I miss my dresses. Mama, Esperanza said, laughing that Mama would admit such a thing to her. Shh, said Mama, you will wake Isabel. I miss my dresses too, but we don't seem to need them here. This is true, Esperanza, and do you know what? I am so proud of you for all the things you are learning. Esperanza snuggled close to her. Mama continued, tomorrow we are going to a church in Bakersfield. After church, we are going to, to una tienda called Cholat, Cholitas. Josefina said she sells every type of a sweet roll and Mexican candies. They were quiet, listening to Isabel's breathing. In church, what will you pray for, Esperanza? asked Mama. Esperanza smiled. She and Mama had done this many times before they went to sleep. I will light a candle for Papa's memory, she said. I will pray that Miguel will find a job on the railroad. I will ask Our Lady to help me take care of Lupe and Pepe while Isabel is at school. And I will pray for some white coconut candy with a red stripe on top. Mama laughed softly. But most of all, I will pray that Abuelita get well and that she will be able to get her money from Tia Luis's bank and that she will come soon. Mama stroked Esperanza's hair. What will you pray for, Mama? I will pray for all the things you said, Esperanza, and one more thing besides. What is that? Mama hugged her. I will pray for you, Esperanza, that you can be strong no matter what happens. The end of chapter eight.